Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caveman Aston, and this is the newest addition to my workshop. Uh, this is an 84 engineering belt grinder. Uh, I brought it from multitoolproducts.com. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, and today I'm going to hopefully, the unboxing video has come out okay, um, and then I'm basically going to jump after that straight into doing a bit of an overall review of how easy it was to assemble, what it's actually like now I've got it all ready, and um, yeah, I'll let you guys know what I think. Okay, so I've got most of it out of the uh, boxes. Uh, what I've got here is the base, which I'm going to assemble before I actually put the grinder together on top of it. So I'm going to do that first, follow the instructions. Um, yeah. So I just want to say a few words about where I brought it from uh, because that can be just as important as what you're buying in itself. Uh, so I found multi-tool products where I brought it from have been really helpful. Uh, John, their rep, has answered all of my emails really quickly. Uh, he's sort of given me quite a bit of advice about what I do and what's particularly what I don't need. I was about ready to buy just about everything they had on offer and he said you probably don't need this just yet, come back and order it if you do decide you need it or something does a similar job you'll be you'll get by if you decide later on you need it, come back to us. It was really helpful in helping me decide that. Uh, he also gave me a bit of information about the grinder itself, I asked a few questions about the difference between this and the uh, the 2 meter version, so the two different belt sizes, turns out they are both the same model and with the length of arm adjustment it's able to compensate for the different lengths and belts between the 2 by 72 and a 50 by 2 meter belt. So under the bonnet they're actually the same grinder now on this particular model. So the actual way the entire thing came packed was on a, a standard pallet as far as I know. Um, all wrapped up in sort of uh, like the black heavy duty tape stuff that they put over everything to make sure it's waterproof um, and then all of the boxes were incredibly thick cardboard boxes and a lot of the sort of stuff like the grinder all of the attachments um, they've all got special made cardboard cutouts that sit inside the boxes uh, designed to exactly make sort of the shape of the stuff that's inside so nothing moves around nothing hits other parts so it, it gets to you in pristine condition as you would expect but without all of the extra bubble wrap. So lots of recycling to do, now I've unboxed it all, absolute mountain in the corner of the garage the other day, um, but all really well packed, I was really impressed. So putting this thing together, I'll bring you up close on the legs, uh, currently now actually bolted to half of the pallet that it came on just until I find a permanent place to put it, but we'll give a bit of a talk about how the legs were to put together. So the legs, uh, along with the rest of the grinder, are all appear to be powder coated, which makes for a really nice uh, end result, a lot more robust than some other paints can be. Uh, makes it a little bit more hard wearing. The steel that everything's made from is really nice, thick, sturdy, robust, however you want to look at it. Um, it's not going to go anywhere as you put it together, as you use it. Uh, you'd have to hit it pretty hard with something very heavy to start making a dent in a lot of the metal work here. Um, the feet, uh, it's like two, not quite right angle bits, but two sections that are bent uh, and then bolt through onto the upright uh, with two bolts. There's then four bolts for the feet to go into the floor and then there's another two bolts 
that attach the initial upright to the second section of the upright. The second section of the upright has got a handful of holes drilled up through the, the centre of it. This allows a bit of height adjustment for the grinder, uh, which inside the book tells you approximately the uh, amount of holes you want exposed when you put it together for your height. Then lastly, at the top, it's got the right angle bracket that then attaches to the grinder itself. Uh, there's then like a little kip handle that then just screws in the side. Uh, that is then used to clamp it down at the different angles uh, as you rotate the grinder through 90 degrees that it's got available for movement. Uh, my only issue with the right angle bracket as it is, well, they may not have had a choice in designing it any other way, but if there was a way to make it so that the grinder mounts on the top, it would make it so much easier during assembly. Uh, as you can see here, you have to put the bolts through and support the grinder mid-air effectively until you can get the nuts done up. Um, whereas if you could put the grinder on top of the right angle bracket and then just rest it there until you get the bolts through, it's more of just uh, making sure it doesn't topple off until you get the bolts through rather than supporting the entire weight while you're doing it. Uh, otherwise, legs were a piece of cake to assemble, instructions were pretty straightforward, no, uh, not a lot else to be said. Now, I know I said the legs were really easy to put together, but believe it or not, the grinder itself is actually the easiest bit to put together in many respects. Um, most of it comes pre-assembled, so all of the body here, which I'll get you some close-ups of in a second, uh, all comes pre-assembled in the box, sort of super secured with all of its cardboard. Um, I think the only thing that I had to do after I got it out was take out two bolts up here to install this little uh, spark guard. Uh, put on the wheel here that's just a idler slash uh, tracking wheel, uh, tracker up here. Uh, add the motor and then the arms and stuff obviously you just sort of plug in and it's all good to go. So attaching the motor was much like the rest of it, pretty simple to do. It's a uh, other than having to lift it in mid-air while I tried to put it on, it's got four bolts that you just screw in through the plate on this side and that holds it. Once you've got one you can let a little bit of the weight off and uh, get the other bolts in so it becomes a lot easier. Uh, my only issue with the whole build process really has been some of the documentation. Could have just done with some either pictures or diagrams, would have uh, painted a thousand words. Uh, and the online video of how to assemble the actual grinder itself, including attaching the motor, appears like it's out of date. It's possibly just the fact that I've got a newer model and there's some subtle differences, but I found like the motor itself and something else was just, just subtly different. Um, and didn't make 100% sense at first, um, but otherwise, really good, really easy to put together. Um, I really can't recommend it enough so far. Oh, and one last thing with the motor is that on the back here, uh, there is a control box perhaps. This is where the power cable comes in, is uh, that can't go on the top, as I found out after initially installing it like that, because I was busy trying to balance the motor. Uh, ended up with that up top and it interferes with the arms here, so make sure it's on the back or the bottom. doesn't appear to be any instructions which way it should go, but it means that the power cable hangs straight down, which I think is probably best. So here is the grinder side on. We'll start at the top. Here is your arm to a, for the tensioner. It's on a gas strut, but the magic happens here where the gas strut locks in the down position so that you can change the belt arguably one-handed. Um, Actually, it's a really nice feature, it just keeps it so you don't have to worry about holding it down while you're putting the belt in, and then it just pops up. Then the actual grinder itself, I don't know if you can see from there, but I would say that's probably about 10mm thick plate all the way through. Absolutely rock solid. Um, this plate on the side, you've got the two kip handles here, which uh, tighten in the plate here, or the platen here. Um, We'll start with the plate. This is the plate that comes with the grinder. It's just a basic flat plate. Uh, same, sorry, uh, same powder coated uh, finish as the rest of the grinder. Uh, the arm is a hollow steel arm, whereas the platen arm is a solid aluminium arm. Don't know how much difference it makes. 
there is a bit of weight difference, I can't remember which is heavier, but there's not a massive amount in it. Um, but with the plate just here, there's a really nice little recess that actually goes beyond the belt. So if you're grinding something and it goes past the belt, you've actually got a little bit of support behind the platen. Um, and it just wraps around the belt, just really, not super snug, but snug enough to have a, a really nice... It just wraps around the belt nice and tight. Um, not a lot to say about this, it's just a, a big flat plate. It's a decent size, you probably get plenty of stuff on here. Um, and it's it's pretty thick. Uh, slides out, nice long arm, so you've got plenty of adjustability. The platen itself, I think, is a great design. Uh, so it's got this kip handle here, which you loosen off. Maybe you have to adjust that there, like so. And what it does is it rotates full 360. And it's just on a pin that sits in here. Um, so arguably the whole thing can come out and can become interchangeable with other bits of tooling. Um, what I like about this is you get the initial pattern here with the two wheels. Um, so you've got your various flat and angle or at angled grinding. So you've got any angle you fancy. Um, you then got this uh, contact, this size contact wheel, which I can't remember, but you, there's uh, the two different contact wheels here and here. You get the as standard. This is uh, an additional item, but I think it was well worth it. The plate comes designed to take it, and it's a five inch contact wheel. And then the combination, if you do have all of these, you get the additional contact wheels, you also get the uh, slack belt grinding in between each of these contact wheels with different lengths of slack belt. Um, I think it's a great idea and it just cinches up so it's really easy to use. And you can pop that out. This is one of the additional tools that I've got, also solid aluminium arm. Is the small wheel grinding attachment. Up here you've got a, a belt deflection wheel, so the belt actually comes on the underside of this so that you get a much more uh, tight radius on here on the small contact wheels. So it wraps around there and goes to the back wheel. Same sort of design, so that spins around so you get your two different contact wheels. I suspect that would probably have fit the other arm. But what's done is done. Um, so these come with two different size uh, contact wheels on this and I've been told they're not interchangeable but I don't know. So I've got a second set with different size contact wheels even if they're not interchangeable it does mean I don't have to do quite as much messing around if I do want to change them. That goes in there, locks in Flat probably locks in place, and then you get your different size contact wheels. So, hopefully, here's a slightly better up close of the different size contacts. I suspect you can probably pop off the Allen keys there or there and change the contact wheels over because you can buy them individually. I've not set this one up before. So this is the universal tool arm, um, and it's it's got handles everywhere. So you've got a couple of different height adjustments and angle adjustments. So you've got vertical height on this one, you can swivel at any angle you fancy. Then this one has got an additional height adjustment and of course swivel. And then on the underside. You've got a uh, tilt, uh, so between it you've got pretty much every base covered. Uh, so there. And then the other additional benefit to this is I can pop this arm out and this is the ooh, the plate specifically for the small wheels. So if I just put that in here, and then we 
can adjust these and what you can do is you can bring this up to the wheel exactly where you want it lock it all in place and I appreciate you guys can't see that very well so I'll use the arm here to rock it over and there we go got a plate with all your different slots for the different size contact wheels um, so obviously you can use them as needed um, and these have got quite a long reach back behind where the contact wheel is so you've got plenty of space to, to work around it and I think that's just about everything to show you on the grinder or at least what I brought um, I did contact uh, the rep at Multitool Products to ask about a a uh, large 10 inch diameter contact wheel but he recommended that I come back at later date if I find that any of these I don't know why I'm touching that one if any of the other stuff uh, doesn't quite meet my needs or I find that I specifically need it because at the moment this is just a sort of getting started uh, doing stuff so if I find that I'm needing it a bit bigger then I could come back and do it then so I'm really grateful for the rep not just trying to sell me absolutely everything that they could um, I mean, the grinder's great. Uh, I haven't really touched on the motor and the controller, which currently is down on the floor. Um, but both of them seem like great bits of kit. All really well sealed. Massive heat sink on the back of the speed controller. Um, and the motor seems to run really, really quietly. So that's a really nice surprise, considering some of the belt grinders I have used were exceptionally noisy. Oh, well. I think that's pretty much everything covered. If you do have any questions, please feel free to uh, drop me a message in the uh, comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. But thanks very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.